next uh, speaker I'd like to introduce is Heather Channon. Uh, Heather is the National Feral Pig Coordinator and she's passionate about raising awareness about damage caused to the environment uh, and also the diseases that can be spread by pigs, feral pigs that is, that can actually um, affect the entire uh, Australian pork industry. Um, I have been very much looking forward to this uh, talk. I understand Heather's a great speaker and I would like to welcome her to the stage. Good afternoon to you all. Thanks firstly to the conference organisers for this invitation to present to you today to discuss feral pig management, their biodiversity impacts and how the National Feral Pig Action Plan fits in. This national program was initiated in November 2019 in response to the ongoing threats of African swine fever entering into Australia devastating impacts that this could cause to the Australian pork industry and the recognition of a need to act to better control our feral pig populations. The National Feral Pig Management Coordinator Program has four key objectives. Firstly, to facilitate national coordination of feral pig management, surveillance and control activities. Secondly, to raise awareness of feral pig issues. Thirdly, to engage with stakeholders through ongoing communications and engagement activities. And fourthly, to drive effective and sustained investment. This is needed to ensure that we can keep land managers engaged and motivated over the long term. One of the key deliverables so far has been the National Feral Pig Action Plan. The plan is the first national strategy ever put in place to reduce impacts from feral pigs in Australia. It's still going through an endorsement process with jurisdictions through the National Biosecurity Committee, and hopefully this will come through very soon. The plan has a 10 year ambitious vision. This is reflective of the long time frames required to reduce feral pig populations and their impacts, as well as the size of the task ahead. The plan aims to shift feral pig management to being more coordinated, collaborative and strategic. The best approach for effective feral pig management due to their mobility and reproductive rate is for land managers to work together in coordinated management groups at a landscape level. Their home ranges can extend across a range of different land holdings, so a cross tenure approach is also needed. However, there are challenges with getting landholders to work together. In 2019, ABES and Pest and Weed Survey it was found that only 8% of landholders were members of a pest animal or weed management group. So we do have a lot of work to do here. For the plan to be successful, we want and need to work closer with all those involved in feral pig management on the ground to increase the adoption of integrated pest management. How to best apply them on, on the ground to optimise success and encourage people to work together rather than individually by building capability and supporting networks of management groups. The vision of the plan is to deliver long-term suppression of feral pig populations or eradication where that's feasible, to reduce their impacts to Australia's agricultural industries, our environment, cultural values and social assets. You can find the plan on our website, feralpigs.com.au. It will do this by guiding and supporting land managers to apply effective, coordinated, sustained and humane best practice management of feral pigs. The plan has three key goals to deliver its vision. The first one is around effective leadership, coordinated partnerships and strong governance. The second is around community engagement and education. It will be really important here to build community awareness of impacts from feral pigs to maintain social license to operate. This goal is also focused on increasing skills and knowledge by land managers in relation to best practice management. The third goal is the doing goal. And this is where we're looking to support land managers on the ground to work together. And through this goal, we'll also be looking to develop and apply existing and new approaches, technologies, resources, data management systems, science-based knowledge and planning for adaptive management. So in essence, the plan aims to support land managers with enhancing their effectiveness in applying humane best practice management, 
in an integrated and adaptive way over the long term by encouraging people to work together rather than individually and delivering the tools, technologies, resources and training needed for this to happen. While the plan hasn't been formally endorsed, we are getting on with implementing the plan. Our governance structures are now being bettered down. Our implementation committee meets around every six weeks or so at the moment, and these meetings commenced in late May. This committee has representatives from across a diverse stakeholder base who are impacted by feral pigs, and we held a formal expressions of interest process to select these members. We've also formed several subcommittees or panels, the Scientific Advisory Panel and the Indigenous Advisory Panel, and we're in the process of getting an Investment Advisory Panel up and going. More details on these members and those involved in the panels can be found on our website, feralpigs.com.au. I'll talk more about the current priorities of the Investment Committee later on in this presentation. So how big is the problem? Feral pigs can be found on up to 45% of Australia's land mass. These figures on this slide reflect the abundant and widespread distribution of feral pigs across Australia and have also included the map for Queensland. ABARES and CSIRO are currently working to update these population density and distribution maps. And this will hopefully give us a better understanding of the distribution and density since these figures were, were produced back in 2008 and 2014. So you can see here that the distribution density of feral pigs in the rangelands regions do vary across the landscape in response to permanent water. Unfortunately, we don't have a good knowledge of how many feral pigs are present in different areas. This lack of information presents lots of challenges. We do need better data to inform local programs, to improve the effectiveness of control programs and to better manage impacts on feral pigs. In 2001, the Australian government recognised feral pigs as a key threatening process under the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. This plan was updated in 2017 and aims to abate the threat to key environmental assets from feral pigs. As shown, feral pigs adversely affect 148 species of threatened flora and fauna and eight threatened ecological communities across Australia. Feral pigs cause significant losses in rangeland regions with impacts including predation of lambs and calves, land degradation and damage to grasslands through rooting behaviours, spreading of weeds, diseases and parasites, soil erosion, water quality and damage to water points. They present significant biosecurity risks from the transmission of exotic diseases, including foot and mouth disease and ASF, and zoonotic diseases to other livestock, plants and to humans. Leptospirosis, brucellosis and Q fever are some examples of these. Disease impacts are often hidden. They also impact on the environment, cultural values and social assets. It's known that through their activities around artesian springs, the feral pigs impact on at least four endangered species in the Desert Channel's Queensland regions. Um, these include the red-finned blue-eye, the Australian painted snipe, the grey grass wren and salt pipewort, as well as impact on the biodiversity of wetlands and freshwater ecosystems. So the management of feral pigs by land managers is also mentally straining and can be overwhelming due to the time, effort and cost to maintain consistent control efforts. This figure provided by the Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment overlays the uh, likely habitat distributions for species linked to the threat abatement plan for feral pigs um, within the likely feral pig distribution map that was shown previously that was generated by Peter West back in 2008. And I include this to graphically show the impacts of feral pigs on biodiversity across Australia. Current pig distribution maps are very coarse. The Department of Agriculture and Fisheries Queensland is working with CSIRO to refine models of feral pig habitat, estimate densities and map this habitat in Queensland. This will help to identify areas for control and management and for computer simulation modelling of disease spread and management, including African swine fever. Monitoring and density estimation is also important to update 
information for modelling purposes. This slide shows draft maps of seasonal habitat suitability for feral pig breeding in Queensland for late dry season, using data for September to November 2019, and a late wet season using data from March to May 2020 scenario. Habitat suitability from zero to 100 is shown. These models will continue to be refined and include, where possible, learnings and parameters from pig movement analysis that's also being undertaken. What does highlight here is that four complementary resource requirements are needed for sustained feral pig breeding, food, water, protection from heat, and protection from disturbance. Last year, as part of the development of the action plan, we conducted a survey with stakeholders to ensure that their views and needs were incorporated into the plan. A total of 776 people responded. The key impacts reported by land managers were de land degradation, crop and or pasture damage, and biosecurity threats and disease transmission. In, in this region, I recognise that feral animals and weed management is the community's highest priority followed by vegetation management, grazing pressure, and surface water management, land degradation, and economics. And all these issues are those that feral pigs can impact on. An annual knockdown rate of at least 70% of the population is required to suppress populations and to keep them low. I'm aware that in many regions, feral pig populations are growing due to favorable seasonal conditions. Their control is unfortunately one that never ends and there's no off switch. Having a management plan in place with clear objectives is really important. And there are lots of resources available to assist with this, including the Pest Smart website. The best practice methods used to control feral pigs are listed here. Which of those you can use will vary due to differences in habitat, landscape type and location. Importantly, they need to be used in combination with one another. One method alone cannot be relied upon to control feral pigs fully. Unfortunately, there is no silver bullet, and I'd love to be in a position to provide you with a quick fix. The only one of these methods that does not work is bounties. Incentivising feral pig control can make the problem worse. And there's a great case study from Tennessee in the US that demonstrates how bounties don't work. Work done as part of the National Environmental Science Program developed a dashboard that brought together all of the data collected into an easy to use platform for Indigenous rangers to use to support their management programs. This work was focused on protecting turtle nests from predation by feral pigs, wild dogs and goannas. I acknowledge this work in the use of this slide. These figures provided a terrific visual depiction of what's needed to make a control program effective. You can see here that if only 15% of the population is removed per year, the population of pigs increases. In contrast, when 78% of the population was removed annually, it was modelled that the population would be reduced to 118 pigs over a 20 year period. While this is the direction we're aiming for with the plan, it won't be easy especially when we don't really know how many pigs are in a local environment. This is very much a work in progress. Importantly, defining what success looks like and capturing and analysing data to enable your management approach to be adapted over time is critical. As we were drafting the plan, it was apparent that little data is captured by land managers um, to measure the outcomes of control programs on the assets being protected. Most of the emphasis was being placed on the numbers of pigs dispatched. But unfortunately, that doesn't mean much if we don't know how many pigs were initially there. So did we achieve the population reduction targets? The scientific advisory panel is now assisting with identifying measures that are easy and quick to collect and, and meaningful. And this is an area that requires a lot of work and is a key priority for the plan. Really from this, I want to emphasise that monitoring feral pig populations is a necessary part of strategic control. There are a number of systems available for this, and these include the Fulcrum app that's been built by Desert Channels Queensland for land managers to, re to record their data. Another system is Feral Scan. 
So much of the work around feral pigs is about people and influencing practice change. Increasingly, technology is being applied by land managers to assist with both monitoring and managing populations to know that they are there, how many are there, and where they move to increase effectiveness of culling operations. On this slide, I've included an image analysed by the evolver.com software that Desert Channels is also using to more easily interpret images captured by field camera networks located throughout their region. Drones and helicopters fitted with thermal imaging cameras are also being used to get better knowledge of populations that are present. Some programs are using GPS collars or service tags to track pig movement in the landscape over time. And this information is all being used to build and encourage land managers to work more closely in local and regional management groups to manage feral pig problems and to improve the cost effectiveness and efficiencies of control programs that are being undertaken and to targeting key areas which can change at different times of the year. Since 2011, aerial shooting and baiting programs of feral pigs have been conducted in the Channel Country to slow their downstream migration into the Lake Eyre Basin and reduce their environmental and agricultural impacts, with more than 30,000 pigs being removed. Current work is focused on understanding the population dynamics of feral pigs and using this information to, to strategically design and implement effective control programs. Cameras have been placed at around 150 targeted sites, primarily in areas dominated by permanent water across the region, recording presence and absence of animals, including feral pigs. Images are processed by evolta.com and counts can then be displayed on a dashboard. This system enables a relative index of feral pig abundance to be determined and data is also used to assess and monitor site recovery after coordinated feral animal control. As an example of some work being done, disaster recovery funds were used by Winton Shire Council at Cisbania in September 2020 with 142 pigs dispatched by aerial shooting. Moving on now to where we are at with getting the plan actioned on the ground, we have a number of immediate priorities that we're working on. We are supporting existing on-ground community-led activities. We're also looking to establish a number of facilitated demonstration sites involving existing management groups to evaluate different management strategies and monitoring methods that are being used. This, these learnings will then be shared across other management groups as through our stakeholder networks. And we're wanting to really enhance and build the effectiveness of control programs being undertaken for feral pig management. You may have also recently heard that DEF Queensland's obtained funding from the Commonwealth Government for feral pigs. And the project that they'll be working on <clears throat> will focus on enhancing feral pig management in Northern Australia through demonstration of optimised management. Demonstration sites are being set up involving selected landholder groups to refine, test and monitor management practices being used. We're really excited about this and look forward to working with DAF Queensland on their work and feeding it into the actions of the plan. The demonstration sites will also help to quantify impacts on feral pigs and this data will assist in adapting strategies to manage them over time. We're also looking to set up a network of regional coordinators looking at increase in adoption of integrated best practice management by land managers, looking to develop appropriate performance measures to measure outcomes of management programs, developing best practice guidelines and templates for local management plans, and looking to add value by attracting additional investment. We launched our information hub on our website earlier this year. The purpose of the hub is to build networks of management programs and research underway, gain stronger awareness of programs, organisations involved, and to help drive the plan so that the activities can be more coordinated and connected. What the hub currently looks like for Queensland is shown on the right of this slide. We're in the process of contacting everyone to update it. There's also many more programs that we are still to learn about um, and also include. So please get in touch with me after this to discuss your programs and I'd love to hear from you. I'm working with all those around Australia to make much needed differences to achieve the plan's vision and reduce impacts being caused by feral pigs. So the key points of the plan is focused on are 
reducing felpid populations by at least 70% annually, with these targets being able to be cost-effectively measured and monitored, supporting landscape-based cross-tenure control programs, and having strong networks of coordinated management groups in place around Australia, working together in partnerships. This program is all about supporting people on the ground and we're striving to connect with our stakeholders in a number of different ways as detailed on this slide. I just thought I'd mention that our next stakeholder forum will be held next Monday and it'll focus on feral pig management planning and provide lots of practical advice to help with applying best practice management on the ground. This will be recorded and available via our website after the event. Thanks for your time.